Welcome everyone to the worldwide conference on delivering the human future. Um, the purpose of the conference is to raise global awareness that we are not facing just one or two catastrophic risks, uh, but many, and that they are all interlinked. My name is Ol Familiani. I'm going to be your facilitator for this conference for the next two days. So I thought it might be useful to give you a couple of words about who I am. I am a lecturer at, on the future at the Halt Business School in London. I am also a principal at, a, uh, at SWAF, uh, which is a consulting firm that advises organizations on foresight and helps them prepare for the future. And finally, I'm also a sci-fi writer. I write novels that explore different scenarios and impacts that, and the impacts that they could have on humanity. So you can imagine that given what I do for a living, I was uh, thrilled when I was asked to moderate this conference, which touches on all the crucial topics that humanity faces for the future. It's a great privilege for me to support this admirable initiative, especially given the fantastic range of speakers. Today, eight eminent specialists in their field um, will introduce us to the risks facing humanity ranging from pandemics, water scarcity, climate change, and bio biodiversity loss to security and the threat that is posed by AI. We live in exceptional times and it falls to us, every single one of us, to live up to the critical tasks ahead. Whether you are watching this now or in a few months, wherever you are in the world, whatever you, your age or gender or creed, it falls to you to avert these catastrophic futures. We were born into this world that needs us at this precise moment in history where our actions will determine the future of humanity and the planet. And so as a writer, of course, I think of the great films and the great stories that we are told all our lives. And it's like in the movies and the novels where the smallest person can make a difference and we must accept this mission and step up to it. This is our chance to be part of something greater than ourselves. This is our chance to change the course of history. This is our chance to leave behind a world better than the one we came into. We must step up because the alternative is beyond our worst nightmares, because the alternative is the end of everything that's good and worth living for. So like the hero who faces his darkest night of the soul, we must face to the challenge ahead and remember that we are part of a great story, that we are the heroes that will persevere in the face of adversity and that we can triumph, that we must triumph because no one else will save us it's up to us. So with that in mind, it is my great pleasure to introduce you to our first speaker today, John Hewson. John is a professor of public policy at the Australian National University. He is the chairman and co-founder of the Council for the Human Future. And he is also one of the hosts of this conference. He is a former political leader in Australia and chairs the Australian Sustainable Development Council. An economist by training, John has worked for the IMF, the UN, and the Asian Development Bank. So it is a great honor to have him today to open this conference, and he's going to talk to us about the challenges that we face. Well, thank you, Alpha. Fellow citizens of the earth, I bid you a warm welcome to what we hope will become one of the milestone events of the decade, a worldwide conference on delivering the human future. Your hosts of this conference are the Millennium Alliance for Humanity and the Biosphere, or MAHB, based at Stanford University in California, the Common Home of Humanity, based in Gala in Portugal, and my own organisation, the Council for the Human Future, based in Australia. We share a common concern about the human future and the risks that we all face as members of a global civilization. Our purpose in holding this conference is to describe these risks in a way that anyone can grasp them and to discuss how we can best solve them. 
It is no exaggeration to say that humanity, humanity faces an existential emergency, a combined threat to our very existence. This is by far the greatest danger we have faced together since we first stood upright and walked from the grasslands of Africa into a world in which humans now dominate, utterly dominate. We are victims of our own success as a species. That very success now endangers us. We hear much about climate and extinction, but at the Council for the Human Future, you understand that there are 10 interlock threats to our future, which must all be solved together. These threats have been identified, measured and remeasured by scientists around the planet for over half a century or longer. There is no question that they are real. There is no question that they are happening now. And there is no question that they are extremely grave. There have been countless conferences and meetings to discuss individual threats, such as climate change, nuclear weapons or extinction. And they have reached some very important conclusions about what must be done. However, the central message of this conference is that we cannot solve these threats one at a time because they are all interconnected. They are all driven by the same fundamental forces, human overpopulation and overconsumption of the Earth's resources. We must solve them together in ways that makes none of them worse off. To try to prioritise threat, one threat is to invite disaster from another. I must admit to, uh, in recent days, to significant frustration and concern that global political leaders and policymakers seem to be so short term in their focus, often ignoring the science, other significant evidence, and of course, specific warnings of pending uh, challenges and crises. However, at the same time, I've been encouraged by collaboration globally in response to the COVID pandemic, along with a significant shift in the domestic behaviour of governments households, businesses and institutions. Important changes have occurred in behaviour in terms of the way we live, the way we work, the way we travel, the way we save and spend and, and, and in terms of government policy response. We've demonstrated clearly that the world can pull together in a crisis. Over the next two days you will hear some of the world's finest minds describe each of these threats and what we can do about them. We invite you to listen or watch carefully wherever on earth you may happen to be. We invite you to contribute by considering the best ways we can achieve the survival of our civilization and our species. We invite you to share the online talks of our expert speakers with family, with friends, with workmates, and with your own contacts. The modern internet and social media means that for the first time in human history, it is possible to hold a worldwide discussion. For humanity to start to think together about these risks it faces and the benefits we can reap from overcoming them. This conference and its talks will go worldwide on social media to reach everyone who is online and is concerned about their own future on an imperiled planet. It, its talks will exist online for months and years after this event ends. Uh, they will be a lasting influence in favour of a, a wiser, safer future for all humanity. We hope that we, they will stimulate and inform discussion in homes and workplaces, on farms and in offices or factories, in parliaments and public assemblies, between friends and family, of what we humans must do together to save ourselves and to build a brighter future. Above all, we hope this discussion will help to translate the calls for global action into clear advice about what each of us should do and can do as individuals in our lives and our work to build a safer, more sustainable world. To solve a problem, you must have first understood the problem. Our speakers will both describe the problems we face and the ways we can go about overcoming them without making any of them worse off. I now invite you to listen to their collective wisdom and to, to bring your own to the task of helping to ensure the survival of humanity, our civilization, and achievements far into the future. There is no greater or more honorable undertaking. There is nothing more urgent in the entire human agenda. There is nothing more inspiring, uplifting and motivating than helping to deliver the human future. And back to you, Alpha. Thank you, John. Uh, so, John, thank you so much for introducing the conference for us and for explaining uh, so, so vividly why it matters. Um, I, I would like to ask you a couple of questions. So first, you were um, a, a, a vibrant part of the Australian political landscape for years. 
you were the liberal leader. And um, I, I noticed that in 2016, uh, you addressed a crowd of 2,000 people on a, in an environmental protest. And you said that climate change um, it should be a dominant issue and that lack of action on climate change is a national disgrace. Um, why do you think what you called short-term politicking is still dominant in most countries on that topic? I think politics has just become increasingly short-term in its focus. Uh, in our country, the focus is just on winning the next election or staying in government rather than solving problems. And all the bigger issues, the bigger challenges are ignored and pushed down the road. And even when there are specific warnings, uh, when the evidence is overwhelming on the urgency, on the need for urgent action, we don't see it. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's disheartening to watch this uh, very short-term political game playing, scoring points on each other in the process, shifting blame to the other side. The bottom mm. line is everybody's worse off and you've pushed so much of the adjustment to the future, to future generations. That uh, it is a, I think it's a, it's a moral failing as much as it is a broader economic and social and political policy failing. Absolutely, I agree. Um, it, it brings to mind the social contract as explained by Jean-Jacques Rousseau, uh, which uh, posits that um, individuals trade in their freedom in exchange for safety. Uh, but in a way, our governments are, are failing to take action on an issue that threatens our very survival. So as a politician, what do you think would finally trigger uh, gov governments to take action? How can we get politicians to listen uh, at a time when our survival is at stake? Well, our hope with this sort of conference is that we can elevate the debate and we can get everybody talking about these issues globally. And hopefully in time that uh, filters through to the political process. I mean, it's, it's not easy and it's, it's going to take time for that, for that to occur. But um, you know, we just need to keep drawing attention to the significance of the science in all the areas that we're looking today and tomorrow and, um, and trying to get people to understand, political leaders, policymakers to understand that this is urgent. I guess with an adversarial system, political system like ours, where one side needs to disagree to some extent with the other, it's very difficult because what you really need is bipartisan support. We need global agreements global understanding and one of the things we're hoping to get out of this conference in the end I think is a letter to all the governments and policymakers of the world to try and crystallize the urgency of the challenges these 10 existential risks uh, that uh, are facing humanity and uh, recognize the consequences of putting it pushing them down the road the, the the costs of inaction far outweigh any adjustment and disruption or cost of action Thank you so much for your contribution and uh, we will be talking to you again, John. Thank you so much for, for attending.